here in, in John uh, 4, 27 through uh, verse 35, just then the disciples returned and they were surprised to find Jesus talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do, you, uh, what do you want or why are you talking with her? That's a good thing. We're going to talk about that. Verse 28, and then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. Could this be the, the Christ? And they came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, verse 31, meanwhile, the disciples urged uh, him, saying, Rabbi, you need to eat something. Verse 32, but he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. And then the disciples said to each other, well, could someone have, have brought him something to eat? In verse 34, he says, my food is to do the will of, of him who sent me and to finish my wor his work. Uh, verse 35, do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields for they are ripe for harvest. So here is this. I, I, there's so many, so much stuff here about rela discipleship relationships. Um, when the disciples come back here, the things that, that they say and do and don't do are all uh, so telling um, so, uh, in verse 28, um, the, the way that Jesus interacts is interest and in, 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 interacts with this lady shows us that John three, uh, 17 through 21 is, is true. So John three, 17 through 21 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in him is condemned already because he's not believed in the, in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that light has come into the world and the people loved darkness rather than light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works will be exposed. I can tell you uh, the um, uh, the will of of a man to deny the love of God is um, dumbfounding. I don't know the word to say. I know a man who who died three times on the table, operating table. Three times this man died. He went in for surgery. Uh, they started the procedure. He had cardiac arrest. They brought him back to life. He shocked him, brought him back to life. He um, recovered. Um, I don't know how much time between the before the second surgery, uh, but they went in for surgery uh, the second time. Same thing happened. Um, he went in surgery, started the procedure, cardiac arrest. He died a second time. Um, he he recovered. Third time he went. Um, same thing happened again. Three times this man died on the operating table. All three times, after the first time, after the second time, and after the, the third time, I went to visit him in the hospital. I said, listen, man, God loves you. He's given you a, another chance to, uh, to think about Jesus and, and to accept God's love, his forgiveness. And all three times, that man looked at me and said, not interested. And now, I, I'm not, I don't know. I just, I had a loss for words for, uh, to, at the depth of the human condition that you would die three times 
on an operating table, come that close to, um, to eternity and not having another chance to hear about the love of God and still rejecting it. Um, so when it comes to uh, reaching our friends and sharing the gospel and interacting with, with people, um, be aware the, the human condition, men's ability to deny the obvious um, is strong. And so here the disciples are, they're returning, and um, the way Jesus interacts with this woman shows us that John uh, 3, 17 through 21 is, is true, that God, God didn't send Jesus to condemn the world, but that he, he loves individual people. He loves people, and that um, it is man's sin that condemns him. And this is the thing about this man. I just told you the story that he, he could not bring himself to say yes to, to God. My, my own father, I uh, was sharing the gospel with him several times. He finally came at, at 71, uh, 71 years old came to um, receive Christ. I remember sharing the, the gospel with him in, in our home, in the driveway, and, and him just crying because uh, he couldn't reconcile how he couldn't believe, bring himself to believe that God would love somebody who had done the things that he had done. And, and so that's a testimony to uh, our um, awareness of our sin and um, the serious nature of it, and then coming to that point where you can um, receive God's forgiveness for that, for that sin. And that's why we need um, mature men and women in the, in, involved in the lives of other men and women, helping them see it, not just, not just going to church and sit and listen to a sermon. We have to be out in the world um, reaching our friends with Christ. And so the way that Jesus treats this lady um, shows that um, uh, he didn't come to condemn, but like in contrast, you know, when Moses wanted to see God and when Isaiah did and other instances, the disciples, when they got a glimpse of who Jesus was, they in contrast, they got a, sin, a, a glimpse of their own sinfulness. And so it is men's sinfulness that condemns them. And here is Jesus loving these, this lady and the disciples. And, um, and so it, it proves that believing in Jesus is, is the way to God, that if you want light, if you want truth, if you want understanding, it has come in the form of, of Jesus. John 1 mentions that. It proves that some, some men are going are gonna to choose darkness. Um, I, have ha I had a man in my home sitting in a circle. Um, all kind of bad things going on in his life. You name it, he was caught up in it. And he lowered his head. He crying, grown man crying. He raised his hands. He said, I just, he just, he said, I just want, well, I want to be chosen by God. And, uh, for whatever reason, a few weeks later, he began to drop off. A few months later, he, he quit coming, wouldn't return my calls. So some men are going to choose darkness. You you think about how can, in, in the Gospels, how can someone hear the same sermon under, at the same time under the same circumstances? And some say, um, well, this must be the Messiah, while others say, we need to plot to kill this man. I mean, 
Some men are going to choose darkness. Read Romans 1. They choose darkness because they like their evil deeds. That's what Romans 1 says. They, they like darkness rather than light. Um, it's a contradiction to say that you, that you love light, but, you, but you're going to stay in the darkness. You can't do that. You can't make God out to be what you want him to be. The closer you get to authenticity in your walk with God, it does not mean that you rewrite the gospel and make him into be something that you want him to be. The close, the more authentic you get in your walk with God means the closer you get to the God of the Bible. The closer you get to what he says he is, not what men say that he is. And this is a hard, a long, hard discipleship conversation that we have and the relationship that we're in with men as they discover this about themselves. That they would rather rename God to be something else rather than what the Bible says that he is. And it's for us to be in a healthy, ongoing relationship with them uh, so that they can see that and hopefully come out of that. So light exposes what is evil. Light doesn't give you the option or privilege to, to rewrite the character and integrity of God and the ministry of Jesus. So don't, don't claim to have been enlightened and then start changing um, uh, Judeo-Christian um, uh, worldview. Scripture teaches that if you if you live by the truth, you're gonna you're gonna come to the light. That's what Jesus said. If you love what is true, you're gonna come to the light, and you're gonna you're gonna be given more light. You're gonna be given more truth. That's what Jesus. That's what Jesus says. So wanting the truth, wanting following what is true. That's what again. That's what Cornelius did. He just followed. What, was, what light was given to him. Following the truth, obeying what you know leads to more light, leads to more understanding. It leads to more, more obedience and, and a greater, greater passion for God, greater passion for people. And that's what happens here. This lady uh, goes to people. And so... Um, and when Jesus uh, did this, uh, interacted with her in such a way that he exposed her sin, but she fell in love with him, right? This is why we say love, love people the way Jesus loved you. Because you hopefully are growing in your awareness of your sin, but you're still falling more and more in love with Jesus. And so this is what he did with this, with this woman uh, she wanted to tell everybody that she knew, come and see this man who told me everything I'd done. Well, they knew everything that she did. <laughs> I mean, this it's, is it's kind of a funny passage in the sense that you, you think about it, and, unless I'm missing something, which happens, all right? But she goes and tells the, the whole town, come and see the man who had told me everything that I have done. Could this be the Messiah, all right? Because she already said that we're waiting on the Messiah, the Christ, Maybe this is him. And they're thinking, we already know everything you've done. We don't want to come out there. But they did, right? So this woman, so overjoyed that, that she believes she has met the Christ, he might be the one, goes and tells all the people that, can, that have condemned her. All the people that have rejected her. That's why she's out at the well by herself in the heat of the day. Right? So the woman wanted to tell everyone um, to come see the man who had told her everything that, that she had done. And, you know, that's not uh, a good way to invite people to church. You know, hey, come to church, you know, so we can tell you about all your sin. Read the Bible so you can, uh, Sp Spirit of God can tell you all about your sin and your wickedness, right? Um, but that's what she did, man. She's just over overjoyed 
that God uh, had sent the Messiah and she was getting a glimpse of his, uh, his love for her. So Jesus was, was saying, I, I, I'm, I'm not here to condemn you. Just like the woman caught in adultery in John 8. I'm not here to condemn you. Um, I'm here to be condemned by you. And that's going to happen on the cross. Of course, she didn't know that at that point. Um, but here is a nobody, right? This is like the Casting Crown song, I'm just a nobody. Here's a nobody um, in the eyes of the world uh, that has come to, to Jesus and and he has embraced her and and she turns around and embraces those who have rejected her that's the amazing thing about the love of god if you truly have met jesus and then grown in your walk with him you're going to want to tell that amazing love because you were going to hell now you're going to heaven. You're going to want to tell that message to even to those people who have hated you and hurt you. You're going to want to share that, that with them. So this woman has come to the end of herself. She's been broken. And that's a good place to find yourself. I've said before, I mentioned this to our 12th grade um, boys class at church. Brokenness is a good, good, good place to find yourself. To be crushed by an awareness of the glory of God, and in contrast, the uh, the weight of your sin. That's a good place to to find yourself. Don't run from that. If you're in your quiet time and you're singing a song, or you're reading scripture, and and God gives you a glimpse of his majesty in light. And in light of that, you get a glimpse of your sinfulness, the depth of your deception and how you're capable of deceiving yourself and others. Don't run from that. I, I would encourage you to think long and hard about that because God has given you a glimpse of himself and yourself. So if you... If you um, if you want to understand, so here's this woman, right? She knew just a little bit. And uh, if you want to, to know and understand, you can. If you want to follow, if you want to, you can. Yeah, you have to evaluate when you start growing, right? You start being challenged. And that happens in a discipleship relationship. You start growing, you start being challenged, and then you bail out because it's too much. We, we want to keep our, our pet sin. We want to keep our pet ideas. And uh, we're not willing to accept the God of the Bible the way he is. So um, if you want to have a relationship with God, you can. You can also bail out. And that's what a lot of, a lot of people do. And so this, this woman went back to her town. And what happened? But Jesus stayed for Jesus stayed for, for two days and then many people believed because of her. That's amazing. And, and I read this and I, I say, well, who, who's believing? Who's come to Christ because of me? Who, who believes? Who has come from darkness to light because of my life? And this is the challenge that we we give to to our our disciple. You know, who's who's believing because of you? Who's walking with Jesus because of you? Is there anybody that um that when they when they're asked, my, my friend Billy put it this way, when when they're asked where do you go to church that, that they point to you? I mean you're not yeah, I mean you have to take that in the right way, right? You ought to go to a local church, of course. But is there anybody who believes because of you? And when somebody asks that person, 
you know, where, where do you go to church? Um, and, or why, why are you following, um, that they point to you? It's a good question. Good conversation to have. 